David. I'd like to share with you some ideas about how we can make the healthcare system more patient focused. And one of the reasons we need to do this is that over the last 10 years, the number of emergency admissions to hospital has risen by over a third, and the number of days spent in hospital by people over 75 has risen by two thirds. And as we all know, hospitals are not necessarily a positive place to be for people who are older and frail. So how can we do something about this? Well, we know there are some things that work that can reduce emergency admissions, but also improve the patient experience. And they are things like better coordination of care, better communication, empowering patients and carers, and educating them to help them look after their own health. This is a picture of a toilet. I work in Bristol as a GP. And this toilet is in the house of a lady who's in her 80s. She has a number of uh, long-term health problems, and she has very restricted mobility. She's confined to the ground floor of her house. She sleeps in the sitting room. She can get through the kitchen and then down a large concrete step into the toilet that you see there. A few months ago, she became more unwell with a, a self-limiting illness, so something that was going to get better. <coughs> but one of my colleagues went out to see her. And he identified that the biggest challenge at that point was that she was currently unable to get to the bathroom. So he um, spent the rest of that afternoon trying to organise for a commode to be delivered and for care to be put in uh, to the house to help her be cared for. Sadly, by 7 o'clock that evening, no commode was forthcoming. So against her wishes and preferences, he had to admit her to hospital. And incidentally, the cost of that admission was £3,400. So probably most of us in the room would agree that unless it's completely unavoidable, hospital is not the right place for older people. And I'll come back to the pickled onions later. In the NHS, we've invested huge amounts of time and money in things to try and prevent and hospital admissions, and they've included integrating health and social care, the introduction of virtual wards, performance indicators to encourage organisations to reduce the number of admissions. But none of them have really worked. The good news is, we do have some things that will work. This quote is from the daughter of a gentleman who presented to the emergency department of a hospital in the southwest of England. And I'll read the first part first. She organised everything to dad become, to come home because it was short notice. What happened was he was coming towards the end of his life. He was very unwell. His daughter was trying to care for him at home. And there were a number of issues that suddenly made it much more difficult for her to do that. And one of them was that uh, she didn't have a hospital bed or a bed that was high enough for the district nurses and other carers who were coming in to look after her dad. Luckily, he was seen in the emergency department by a specialist nurse who was interested in any life care or palliative care. And she was able to organise for the equipment to be delivered that he needed, for carers to come in and look after him. And by 8 o'clock that evening, he was able to go home, and both he and his family were very positive about that experience. And that demonstrated that the staff member was able to coordinate the care required, she had fantastic communication skills, she explored with the family what were their fears and concerns, and she was also able to advocate for that patient so that the care he required was put in place. But we have to acknowledge that avoiding admission is not always possible. This picture has been widely circulated on the internet. It comes from North America and it shows a lady who's in hospital. She's also coming towards the end of her life and she had a much loved cat. Her family were able to bring the cat in so that she could spend time with it during her final hours. That takes me back to the pickled onions. So a local colleague told me that some years ago she was on a ward round in the hospital and the nursing <coughs> staff identified that an elderly gentleman seemed to be low, possibly depressed. So after the war round, she went and had a chat with him and uh, said, well, what would make you happy? And he said, since I've come into hospital, I really missed having pickled onions. 
So she wrote on the drug charts, one big penny and one the rest, the rest of his hospital state is much happier. So what does this mean for the healthcare system? Well, as I've described, we know there are some things that can reduce emergency admissions and they also improve the patient experience. And they're not about reorganising the system, they're about traditional qualities of care. We also need to accept that there are many situations where an admission to hospital is not avoidable and many of the people who need that admission will be older and frail. So perhaps we need to remember that excellence is not bound by how an organisation is, is structured, how it's organised, but by how well the individual components of that organisation work. And in healthcare, the key components are the people who work within it. So it's incumbent on all of us, leaders, policy makers, patient advocates, to find ways to support frontline staff, to have the flexibility to deliver care that is focused on patients' needs and patient preferences. 